Hello everyone, uh, Anna Ideas here again um, with my, I think, sixth installment of my interviews with my amazing friends. Today I have the honor and pleasure of introducing you to Barb, McDoug Barb McDougall. She's with Darling Solutions and um, Barb and her team are amazing. I, I recommend them a lot to my senior clients or clients who are downsizing um, because they, they, they do a lot more than just helping with the declutter and downsizing and I'll let Barb explain that. But um, I just thought all of us are home. We've been home for seven to eight weeks now. And those of you who might be thinking about downsizing in the near future um, may have or may be thinking about while we're home, it might be a good idea to start the downsizing, the decluttering process and you may be having a lot of fun doing that, or you may be struggling. Um, so I thought Barb might be helpful to chat with us today. So welcome Barb to my little interview series. Um, glad to have you here. If you could just spend a couple of minutes in introducing yourself to the audience, that would be great. Okay, well, thanks for having me. This is so exciting. Um, I usually do this in person, so <laughs> to do this in a video is, is all new to me. Uh, the, so the first thing is, is that I work in community relations. So basically I do outreach to the community. So I do a lot of educational pieces out either in a retirement residences or in the community themselves with seniors groups, talking to them about, you know, how to downsize and what they need to do and how, and how to prepare for moving. And what's really interesting since I started doing all this, actually, we've seen a little bit of an expansion outside of seniors. So we've been doing actually some help with other Others who are may not be in that senior sector right. um, with their moving and downsizing which is kind of a, um, um, exciting um, but I would still say the majority uh, for sure is our uh, is our seniors great that's wonderful yeah moving is as we all know can be pretty challenging and, and if you're of, of an age and um, have other issues going on it can be pretty stressful um, so if I were home uh, during COVID uh thinking about moving uh selling my house i'm thinking you know what this might be a good time to start getting rid of some stuff or sort of decluttering my home what advice would you have for me um so there's there's a lot of different things that and how you can tackle things but the best thing to do when you're thinking about doing a really big project like moving because it is mm -hmm. um and as you said it's very stressful it's also very emotional too a lot of people don't think about that actually when they're just um they've made their decision to sell their house or they've made that decision to move but to actually go through everything within your house is so um, emotional there's memories um, of things that you have there's memories in the house mm -hmm. and so the first thing that we always recommend is don't go into an emotional room like don't go into your bedroom you know don't go into the closet that has all the family pictures etc you know start something that's non-emotional and for me because um, I did my downsizing almost two years ago, is that I went into my laundry room and that was the best place because laundry, I have no attachment <laughs> to. So, you know, I went into the laundry room and I had all these little containers full of, you know, maybe an inch or two of, uh, of uh, cleaners and, and bits and sods of everything. I had way too many, you know, rags and cloths and stuff. So that's where I started was that non-emotional um, place. Um, um, and then, you know, in COVID times, one of the great places to start is really in garages and sheds. Um, you know, the weather, although it's very cool, um, it's actually, you know, put on a little jacket or a sweater and get out to your garage, get out to your shed. And this is a great time to go through things. You know, so mm -hmm. if you're, you're gathering up things like um, uh, gardening tools, etc. You know, those can be recycled, like metal recycling is, is very big right now. So, you know, set those things aside. So things um, that you think that you wouldn't be able to do, actually, you can do. Um, another big thing that people really forget about is they have a lot of paper. You know, mm. um, if we think about the things that we've saved over time, um, whether it's things that we've had with our children, you know, whether, whether it's report cards, or just taxes, et cetera. We hang on to way too much paper. And if you have children at home or you have grandchildren around, you know, get out your shredder and give them a stack 
um, now make sure it's of course safe that children right. make sure they're not too young but yeah. you know teenagers to pay them to do it mm -hmm. and get them to shred and get that stuff ready um one of the things is that you have to remember in covid time is that they don't want you putting out too much stuff so there might be some furniture that you don't want anymore an old mattress you know big chunky things they don't want any of that bulk stuff out put out right now so you know kind of just maybe set aside an area or a room within your house that you can put all that stuff in that needs to go out into the garbage that you can't donate um, and uh, you know the other thing is is when you're you know doing your gardening and stuff don't put out too many bags like you know two to three of your gardening waste like the things that we used to be able to put out into garbage, you can't right at the moment. Right. So, you know, set them aside. But the biggest thing I can also say to you is please label it because if you started decluttering, you know, um, and, and putting things aside, well, you know what, three, three weeks from now, you're not going to remember what's in that exactly. bag, garbage bag. So label it. Is it going to donation? Is it going to garbage? And for those things that are still used to full, please, please, please hang on to them to donate because I anticipate, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to need things coming out of COVID. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be people that are, are um, going to need the things that you have that are still useful, et cetera. So set them aside because there are places that you can um, donate. Um, so when you're deciding that you're going to downsize, the biggest thing that we always say is use the stop method, which is sort, toss, organize, and put away. So sort through, so say you decide that you're gonna go through that junk drawer. Um, you know, go through it and sort through the things that need to be thrown out. Maybe there might be an item that might be uh, you able to donate and then organize whatever that is that's left in there. So if it's small change and you know, you've got matches and stuff, put all those things together that belong together or put them in places that they belong. You know, if you've got change and you've got change all over the house, maybe there's one spot that needs, you need to have mm -hmm. that change in. So it's just about organizing yourself and then only putting away the things that need to be put away. You know, if you're saying, Oh, I might use that. Maybe it's time to set that aside because it right. might not ever happen. And that's one of the biggest things that uh, we have. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, I might use it. But if you're not using it now, the might not happen. Right. You know, same with those cupboards in the back of your kitchen, you know, like you got or things that are in, you know, cupboards and you haven't touched them forever. The chances of you touching them again is pretty slim. So right. you know, set them aside and donate them because um, it's always great to do. Yeah. And then the, the other thing is, is make a plan. So if plan plan your your you know your decluttering or your organization that you're doing so if today you're going to start you know take half an hour and say you know what i'm only going to do this for half an hour once that half an hour is done set everything aside and maybe you do that twice a day yeah. or maybe you set aside an hour because if you try to do it you know you get up saturday morning you say okay i'm going to clean out the garage and it's all going to be perfect when it's done it might take you longer than the eight right. hours and then you're frustrated or you just don't know what to do so you know what Put it into small chunks. Anything that we do that's big, if you put it into small chunks and if trying to accomplish that, it's going yeah. to happen for you. Yeah. So. And I think that's a really valid point too, because especially if they're doing sort of uh, a room or a space that has emotional energy there for them, um, doing that for a really long time during one single day is going to be very draining for people. So I think that's a really good idea of just doing it, you know, set yourself some time. I'm going to work on this for two hours today. And, and that's that's my goal and then tomorrow again another two hours and I think that breaks things down into little steps that's a lot more attainable for people right because I think it's like you know climbing a mountain and if you if you're looking up all the way up you're thinking oh my god I'm never going to get to the top of the mountain but if you're just looking at your feet and just doing one step at a time eventually you'll be at the top of the mountain so that's a really important thing to do and I know a lot of people who are you know, really go-getters and they just want to get this stuff done. Um, I think emotionally they, they get very drained as well as physically doing it. So that's a really, really good point um, for people to consider when they're starting to do that. Um, so you've, you've touched on a lot of the questions I was going to ask you, which is awesome. Um, so places good to start are, are smaller, smaller spaces. Um, is there anything like, you know, someone starts the process and they're moving along quite well, is there sort of a, a universal spot where people might get stuck? Like, so they've done their shed, they've done their garage, they've done their soft drawer. Yeah. In their experience, are there spots where 
people kind of get stuck and hit a, hit a roadblock or does it depend yeah, on the person? Probably the keepsakes okay. um, is, is a big one um, and art mm. um, and, and photographs. Mm. Um, it's those memories, you know, it's things that have been handed down from, uh, you know, generation to generation or just something simple that, you know, maybe your mom or dad gave you that you just can't let go yeah. of. And so, you know, just remember when you're doing this is not everybody is the same. So, you know, a lot of people talk about Marie Kondo and, and how mm -hmm. everything is perfect. You know what, if your life is not perfect, you know, and your room is not perfect where there's nothing personal around you, um, then that's okay. You know what, when you move on, it'll, it'll be the same way. But if it's not, then mm -hmm. don't make it that way. Always remember to make your new home your home. Mm -hmm. And if you like stuff around you, well, then that's okay. As long as you know you're safe when we, especially when we look at seniors, um, we want to make sure that they're safe. Um, and then the other thing, if, if you're not, is just make sure that you have the room for it, right? right? So that if you've got very large sofa, is that if you're moving into a condo, does that sofa fit? You mm -hmm. know, so it's all about doing that measurement uh, and, and checking to make sure that everything's going to fit. But don't, try to be a magazine like that's the one of the biggest things that we yeah. always say is is that you know what it's your home and you've got to feel comfortable in it yeah. there's nothing worse than moving and then feeling that it doesn't feel like home yeah. um, so we really encourage you to do that the other thing that you'll find is that when you start in the small chunks and then you start with those easy places first by the time you get to the more emotional things you're finding that you're, it's easier to let go than what you thought it would be. And for those things that are very emotional, especially those keepsake things or maybe art, is find family members or find friends around that you know will love your things as much as you did. Mm -hmm. you know? um, uh, my daughter took our, my grandmother's china and she's going to be using it every day. She just Thanks. moved out west uh, just before all of this. So, yeah. you know, that's pretty exciting for me, knowing that she's going to be using it. And you know what? Nobody else was using it at all, like maybe mm -hmm. once or twice a year. So it's nice to know that it's going to be used every day. Yeah. Uh, so there's things that you can do, you know, with extended family and friends that, um, mm -hmm. that may hang on to those memories that you're looking for, like when you for go sure. and visit them. For sure. That's a really good point. I think I read a, a, a story about a, a couple that were downsizing and they, they had this sort of open house in the neighborhood where they had everyone come in. You may have actually shared that with me. Um, friends, family, neighbors came in and they just took stuff. So they yeah. had laid out all the stuff they didn't want and people came in and they, and, and so it was kind of nice because they took said item and then brought it home to them and so every time they saw that said item they would think of their friends so it's also a very nice way of doing that right things that you don't want to take with you because you're right if you're moving from a four you know two-story four bedroom house and you're moving into a smaller condo you just don't have the space for everything right yeah, and absolutely. Um, so you know it's it's i i know that you guys helped a client of mine recently and they downsized quite a bit and then moved into their new place and i went to see them several times afterwards to check in on them and they still had too much stuff. <laughs> they thought they had really cut down and thought they had worked out the space and then, and then they still had like, I ended up sort of taking some stuff with me every time I visited for Sally Ann um, because they still had too much stuff. So it's, it's hard. It's hard. I'm imagining it would be very difficult to sort of look around your space and say, okay, I know what I want to take. I think it should fit. And then when you get into the new space, it either doesn't fit or, or it doesn't fit your sort of new start, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and sometimes it's that opportunity to do that. Like they yeah. look at it as a new start. Yeah. And so they, you know, um, they donate, you know, their furniture is still really great yeah. and they donate it um, to a family that really needs it yeah. um, and will love it as much as them. And yeah. then they start off fresh and there's, yeah. you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this. There mm -hmm. really isn't. Um, as long as you're comfortable and that you are in control, like that's the biggest thing is, is if you get to the point where you don't have control, like for instance, you know, it's a week out and your house is still full and the 
sales closing and you've got to get stuff out. So you've got everybody, family, friends coming in and they're tossing and they're throwing yeah. and they're whatever. Yeah. And those are really hard on people. And then it all is. of a sudden you go, wow, where's this? It's gone. Yeah. Right? So you're better to start early. Like even if you're not thinking of moving today or tomorrow, maybe it's not for another year or two, mm -hmm. you know, go through those things that you haven't touched in a long time yeah. and, uh, you know, start to go through them. Yeah. I think too, something that people don't understand, um, and this sometimes is even the children of, of sort of seniors who are downsizing is that it's not just, you know, it's not just, um, moving into a smaller space. It's a lifestyle change for a lot of people. Right? I use this story all the time with my parents when they downsized the first time. And it was, my mom was all flipping out and freaking out about her 40 fold up chairs. And what am I going to do? Where am I going to put them? And I said, well, why do you need 40 fold up chairs, mom? She says, well, what if I have 40 people over dinner? Which is, was common for her, right? But it's like, mom, you're 80 now. Like you shouldn't, you know, you should, and I said, you shouldn't be doing that. But like, so she, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Because we don't just, you don't have the space. Or my dad makes wine still, right? So where is he going to make wine living in a condo? So it's not just moving from bigger to smaller. It's, it's, it's them coming to the realization that, oh, I can't do this anymore, right? And that's tough for people. That's a tough, really tough mental, emotional block to get through, I think. And I think, you know, people like you and I who work with this demographic really get that, right? And we honor that and, 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 and understand where they're coming from. So it, it just makes all of that even more um, challenging for them. And um, sometimes they just need a helping hand, right? Either you know, from the realtor or from people like you, right? Because we get it and, and we're, and we deal with stuff very gingerly and respectful. And um, at the end of the day, like you said, it's, they're in control. It's their, it's their dance, right? They're leading the dance. We're just, we're just there to help them do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes, you know, having family is great um, and to be able to support you, but sometimes they're too close to it. Yes. And, you know, it can be a strain on relationships. Yeah. If, if family members think you should be doing something a certain way and you're not yeah. prepared to do that. So sometimes it's better to have someone who's not emotionally attached to anything to help you with that decluttering. And we often are doing that is, is mm -hmm. that we start off with the decluttering first. And mm -hmm. so we're helping them go through their things. And so we're the physical side of helping, you know, we're pulling boxes down, we're setting things out so they can go through it and, yeah. uh, and decide what they want to keep. Um, and then, you know, sometimes, you know, we're setting things aside and then when it gets to, to move time, they're ready to let it go to you. Right. So, you know, it's just that, again, it's that process where they're in control and they make the decisions and they're, we're this, just there to support us. You exactly. tell us what needs to be done and we'll make it happen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, it's really hard emotionally mm -hmm. and it takes its physical toll on you to make a lot of decisions and it doesn't matter what age you are we mm -hmm. all know that you know when you're under a lot of stress it physically um has a toll on you so just sure. having somebody not have to do that physical side too is really important too so that you can concentrate on the things that need to yeah. be uh, done which is the decision making absolutely absolutely Okay, I think that's all I had to ask you. Was there anything else you wanted to add to the discussion that I maybe didn't think of? I can't think of anything. You know, like there's, I think maybe just some some post-COVID things is yeah. that, you know, hang on to your stuff. Please don't, don't um, you know, try to throw everything out. Um, the other, th oh, actually, I do have a little tip for you. It's funny because my daughter actually, um, I was speaking to her this weekend, and this is what was happening in her community out west, is that uh, people, of course, were doing their spring cleaning and finding things um, that uh, they didn't need anymore. And because you can't donate it, et cetera, they were leaving it out at curbside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and people were then um, helping themselves to the things. And, you know, it, it's useful things. Like yep. my daughter got a little saw that uh, that they needed so you know if there's an opportunity in your neighborhood um, that you can put out a few things again we want to do it safely yes. um, and with social distancing in mind 
um, and we want to make sure that things are sanitized. Yeah. But if there's an opportunity to do that, um, then then you know that's a great yeah. uh, great way to do it. And yeah. then post COVID, you know, there are some great organizations that do take donations. There's an organization right now um, called Sell My Stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and Corey's wonderful. And actually, I think he's going to start doing some stuff online now yep. um, that things have eased up a little bit. So, you know, there's an opportunity there to have somebody come in and, and uh, sell your stuff too as well. So, you know, yep. just just keep watch. And there, as things open up, there will be places that you can yep. put it. But if you can hang on to it for now, yep. that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. My neighborhood's doing that. People are always posting Thing. they just leave it at the curb things for free and yeah they're good they're good solid things that just people don't want them and and because of covid we're we're having to do things a little differently so yeah. um that's awesome thank you so much for your time barb i am going to put your name and contact information at the end of the video so if anyone wants to contact you for information or guidelines or anything like that um they can and uh, again, thanks for your time. And I'm looking forward to having coffee with you yeah. post COVID. I think uh, Barb and I were just joking. I think she was the last person I met with before COVID sort of yeah. happened and we weren't allowed to be face to face with people anymore. So she was the last person I met with, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah. So I look forward to seeing you again for coffee and uh, stay well. And um, we will talk soon. Yeah, sounds great. You take Thank care you. of yourself too and ha health and happiness for your family. Thanks very much, Barb. Talk Thanks. soon. Bye.